Okay, my name is, well, my channel is the Stainless Silver Rat. My name is Martin Blevin. I'm currently in the life room Southport. And I'm here. Would you like to introduce yourself, sir? Uh, Chase Johnson Lynch, and thank you for asking me to be on your show. You're well, very welcome, Chase. Uh, now, since we're sort of still trying to sort out the format for this, I thought, you know, word of the day, not word of the day, sorry, question of the day. So the big thing in the news at the moment is, of course, Theresa May's uh, Brexit bill, which is going through Parliament at the moment. Have you been keeping up with this? A little bit. I mean, I just saw that uh, video yesterday about how um, the, the big argument in Parliament for the first time was a big shift. And now, you know... Uh, it got a contempt of uh, Parliament. Yeah, perhaps. and it, 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 it looked interesting, but who knows? I don't know how much as an that was. As an immigrant to our country, what is your thoughts on Brexit? Does it affect you? Um, to be honest with you, I don't know what it is. I mean, all I know about Brexit is about the, um, the fact that, that they've asked for um, Britain to leave the European Union. We requested to leave. Well, actually we didn't. As I as I have to understand it, we were kind of like convinced by people like Nigel Farage and everybody else yes, that we should leave. We have a and referendum. It's the best thing for us. Yes. And then because it was presented in a particular way, everybody said, yeah, sure. Now me, I was like, leave. How are you gonna leave? First of all, how did Scotland leave? Scotland's still there, you know. So it, it was like confusing the word this whole leave thing. Mm -hmm. And then everybody got in an uproar when the vote was to leave. And then we spent the past like what six, nine months, two you years, know, trying to overturn. Well, well, we spent this time trying to overturn yes. that initial vote. So supposedly we are now down to are we gonna leave? Or are we gonna stay? And I thought I heard last week that. Uh, that was still was leaving. So I don't know what this whole parliamentary thing that happened yesterday, but it, it looked interesting. The current state is that Theresa May, our current PM, uh, has apparently drawn up a draft deal mm. with the EU for us to yeah. remove ourselves from the European Union. Yeah. Uh, it has not gone down well yeah. at all. No. And uh, they refused to publish the legal advice that they got Mm. Uh, which led to this deal. And that was what happened yesterday, yesterday was that yes. now they have to publish that advice. Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, and it's bad for the government, really bad for the government. Yeah, well, because, you know, it, it clearly is that thing that is happening in the States where it's like the powers that be above, you know, everyone else is going to lose out on something. Yes. You just don't know why. Yeah, so as a, as, you know, uh, a transplant uh, to our country. I love how you, you call it with names. I, I, I've come from New York, New but York, I've come yes. here 17 years ago. Yes. So it's hard to be called you, an immigrant and a transplant. But I will say, well, no, you, you I are. am an outsider. Yeah. No, you're not. You are, you are now a member of our society. I like to think I am. Yes. I pay my taxes yeah. like everybody else. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, you know, you, you get to have all the benefits of your life. Well, yeah, I mean, the cost of living is definitely a huge benefit, yeah. you know, so I mean, I'm definitely... You can imagine the real estate in New York's rather pricey. Oh, my God. You know, I lived in uh, New York City, and I lived in a, what you would call, like, a one-bedroom railroad apartment uh, on a, like, a third floor. Railroad? Meaning that it's, like, one long apartment. Oh, right, yeah. I got <laughs> Yeah. Turn. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, it's, it, it was a long apartment, right, but it was, like, about... Like about nine hundred dollars a month, you know, and I mean yes, uh, the pound dollar is not as strong. So imagine that for one bedroom, and like when I moved here, you know, for a house, you know, two floors, it was like about two yeah. hundred. Yeah. Yeah, I think. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, what brought you to England? Oh, I met uh, my partner on the internet. Actually. Yeah. So I'm one of those original America onlineers. <laughs> <laughs> like the reverse of the uh, wartime brides, so to speak? Yeah, exactly. I was a male or a bride, <laughs> and uh, she was looking for, uh, you know, some kind of New York. No, anyway. <laughs> so, you've got yeah. kids? Yeah, I have a son, yes. You have a son, yeah? Yeah, and, and, and two older stepsons, but um, yeah, yeah, we have a son again. He's 15 now. 15? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know, I'm completely acclimated, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. So how did you end up in Liverpool? Did she live there? Yeah, yeah, she was a scout girl. Yeah, yeah. I'm from Walton and everything, strange enough, so we had to move out of there very quickly. Um, <laughs> so, so how was the be... culture shock? Well, you know, interestingly enough, she told me that, I don't know if you want to be here, because it's like Beirut. I'm like, Beirut? 
Girl, I'm from Harlem, right? You just don't know, right? And um, it was a culture shock, you know, only because, uh, you know, it, it, it was hardcore in Walton. Um, and, uh, but moving out of Walton into Tofta, it was much better. Tofta, really? Yes, Tofta is good. <laughs> Don't believe I've not the been hype. There for, I haven't been there for a while. You haven't been there since the riots. No, you? definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Everybody talks about the damn yes, riots. Yes, they do, yes. It was, a know, big event in our, it was a big event in our area. Listen, I understand it was a big event. I understand that there's a Mason-Dixon line that still somewhat exists. And, uh, like, I mean, it wasn't the New York blackout in the 70s. But. Oh, it definitely wasn't. But, I mean, like, it was It was hardcore. I yeah. mean, I, 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 I've heard all the stories. It was hardcore. But it was an event. Mm -hmm. You know, and the people have been paying for it ever since. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's not like a big divide as as it once was. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You know, and and it's eased uh, the ten the t tension has eased somewhat, has it? <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> How long have you lived there, sir? Um, I would say lived in Thompson for like about sixteen, sixteen. Oh, so you know, 17, 17 years. You put down, you know, roots fairly. So, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I mean, lived in like two parts of it. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I mean, I was uh, on the Dingle side. I'm on the Dingle side. So I'm even in the side where people say don't go. I'm not that far from the Holy Land. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's like I wish it had a little bit more activity in there. But they have somewhat, you know, like Brewery Village yeah. and you know. Um, well, the, the good town. thing about Liverpool is that uh, thanks to the uh, largesse of lots of people in the 18th century, you've got parks coming out of your well, Various you know what? This, this is true. I mean, Sefton Park is one of the most attended like places. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's not central, but it's not central. But that's Park. the point. That's the point. When people refuse to go past the so-called imaginary line, I mean, you know, it's really weird, Tassif. It's like, like if you think about uh, where um, for Parliament is, you know, like when you go down, they mm -hmm. have those like little cones yes. in the wall and um, uh, in the floor. And they said that the police had put that up because of the riots, because to make sure that cars couldn't go through. Surely it's not necessary anymore. But it feels somewhat like a cage. Mm. It's definitely not necessary, but it feels somewhat like a cage where people feel that there's this invisible barrier. And like now with Brewery Village being right on the edge of that, you know, people still go in there, but they go into Set the Park whenever there's like Afro Oye or uh, Brouhaha mm. or any kind of big park. Yes. Carnival event they have in Sefton, yeah. and people from all over. You're like it's just like the Giants, right? When the Giants are here, you do have you football, have you been uh, uh, No, not the football to, Giants. The big the giants, giants, right? From France. I know? went straight to the, the yeah, football club for some you. reason. But 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 like, have you have you been down there? I've not. No, uh, I've not. You've not I've gone down to the, shoot the Giants. No. Really? I didn't have cameras back then, so I, I didn't. It was have only the, just like a couple, like a month or two ago. I didn't have the, you know. Uh, anyway, anyway, yes. my point is, if you see the pictures from that, the city is massive, full of people. Yes. And you're like, where did, where did it all go? <laughs> and they're not even like the students. You know how the students come in here and they're taking over the city? I mean, that's that's a big story, how the students have taken over the city. Yes. You know, because you know what well, student housing is, student housing on every mm -hmm. street yes. and everything, but they leave, you know, like come, you know, summertime. I have a, I have have a friend town. of mine that used to go dumpster diving and um, bin diving what? Uh, right around the time that people were leaving really uh, yeah college and university oh, what, looking for like uh, uh, flat screen tvs computers consoles oh. phones headphones i gotta figure that out gaming chairs <laughs> really yeah. yeah but that doesn't belong to them no well it, it's left out in the garbage it's for anybody it, there's a gray area that is a gray area somebody needs to say with so, the camera off where the dumpster dive is because no, because, you know, those buildings, they advertise that that's what they give you for your rent, which is only like a hundred or freaking, like, what, a week, a month, or whatever yeah. it is. And they get the flat screen TV thing. I mean, they get so much stuff, man. Well, mommy and daddy buy a few things as well. Well, yeah, yeah, but I mean, I can imagine, like, if they're throwing... The last time he it did came it... came with it, I don't know why they were throwing no, out. The no, the last time he did it, he got 33 kettles and 14 microwaves. Okay, that's, that's the stuff. I can understand that stuff they're buying. They're not, they're not, they're not taking that home. It's the producer flash through the TV. Oh, no, he got like three flash screen TVs. Wow. One was broke, he sold for parts, and the other two were really, really? working. Yes. I need to know Monitors. <laughs> he just, he, but he, he, he used to go around at like, you know, stupid o'clock in the morning yeah. and wait for them to put stuff out, just do. If the police would have uh, stopped him, 
they would have asked questions. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It fell off a truck, mate. What are you <laughs> talking about? <laughs> I, I remember those days. Yeah. <laughs> Man, you're well, it's not a thing over here. I follow a couple of people online uh, on yeah. YouTube. It was garbage pickers and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pickers. Well, they have TV shows basically. Yeah, now. and that's it, it's fascinating. And it's fascinating the stuff that they find that just gets left by the curve. Oh, see, it doesn't you happen know, much over here. You know, not to be racist, you know, like all that WP problems. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, but it's like, because like you just said, they're leaving. Yeah. They don't have no use for it. They yeah. just throw it out and everything. So, yeah, good on your mate. So we'll finish off by asking you, so what brought you to the life rooms? Well, I mean, you know, interestingly enough, uh, like last year I was working with an evaluation project. Uh, with uh, voice box and um, you know Amanda Payson and we were a team of people that um, visited the life rooms especially uh, the one in uh, Walton mm -hmm. and you know they were doing interviews and they uh, encouraged people that were involved in the recovery colleges they wanted to be more creative and they could be a participating inside the uh, the project and so I was on that project for about close to a year or so and it made me more aware of what was going on in life rooms, especially the recovery college. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I was kind of like, hey, you know, like, you guys, I actually run courses with the Workers Educational Association, the WA. And, um, you know, so it's like, hey, you want you know, run a course here. And so that's what brought me here. And, I mean, it's, it's been going along really well. It's like, you know, because um, usually I do a film course, like a directing course, you know, where it's about really building confidence with people with being able to, like, you know, um, encourage them to like anything you have to say is worth worthwhile. It's just how do you say it? You know, how do you control that creative energy, so to speak? Like fine tune it like an arrow into what you want to present, and then because you can actually produce it like within three minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really been like very um, really good. So, you know, uh, it's a course that we want to run here and stuff. Yes, well, how can you bring it well, here? Yeah, as well as in in the Boodle because it's like. The main thing about it is everybody needs to be able to explore their creativity in some way, shape, or form. And it's like, if you could do it in a controlled environment, you know, sometimes it's like people need to be able to see. You know, it's like, I'm doing this with my hands, but it's like, it's like how it's molded, isn't it? You know, it's like unbridled creative energy yes. and everything. And that's what it just needs, it's controlling, you know? And I mean, you know about that because it's hard to control you. <laughs> well, is there any good venue for you? No, no, I, no, I mean, the, the Vi, for instance, has been a good venue for the, the classes that you've taught. Bought an interesting mix of people in, aside from myself. <laughs> yeah. I think it is a good venue because I think what it is is, is that, like, I myself relate to a lot of, lot of various um, um, conditions and stuff that are going on here in my films, and, you know, what helps me is my creativity, is being able to be creative. Mm -hmm. And so being able to pass that on to people and trying to give them an outlet for something else because it's kind of like when your mind could be cluttered with a lot of different things, you know, and like, you know, whatever you're dealing with, you know, whether it's depression or, or anything else, it's like you need something to focus on. And so in presenting the course in the way I do it is a way that I feel that is very helpful for me and other people say it's helpful for them in that aspect because it gets them to be able to you know creatively explore all of their different options i didn't even know i could do this one in a classroom and two just in general so mainly it's just getting beyond the fear of like what will people think of me and then and i'm kind of like it's not about what people think of you it's about what you think of you yes if you think of you in a positive way then all they're going to see is the positive way you see yourself I agree. So, I mean, you know, that's, that's what it is, is that trying to present that to people within that context. So, you know, I just think it's more that deal of getting more people to be involved because, you know, they just have to know that. Do not worry about the camera that you see in front of you because I don't know what that fear is. I'm still trying to figure this out. I don't know. Maybe you could help me. I'm trying so to figure out what is the nervous. fear of the... No, do you really think that? I, do. I mean, what? No. I stick a camera in your face, what's the first thought? I start talking. Well, see, well, maybe that's the difference between extrovert and introvert. Yeah. You know? I wouldn't class myself as an extrovert. Though. See, okay, there we go. Now, we're getting somewhere. My point is, you start talking, but so you don't have an inherent fear of the camera. No. But 80% of other people do. 
I'd say it's just a nervousness of doing new things, maybe. maybe. A lot of people have that. And there could be other options. There could be other uh, reasons as well. This is indeed true. It's just something that I feel that yeah, is worth it's an exploring. Interest, that, that's something interesting that we can explore with yeah. the stuff that you've taught us. Yeah, no, exactly. With going because on with the uh, with the because uh, I, I I dearly love to expand the sort of my journey outside of the group. Yeah, because like you were just saying, I mean, in closing, I guess also too is like you were saying is that. You didn't you didn't have equipment when you, when the Giants came around, which I'm talking about was mm -hmm. like about two months ago. So something about maybe doing the course maybe or something like that has inspired you to say, I'm gonna get some equipment. Yeah. I'm gonna get all these different parts and I'm gonna go out and shoot things because it's something that I have an interest in. Is that right? That's correct. So then now you're actually going out and exploring it because you've been taught in a way that, you know what, I can put this together. Like even this piece now, you mm -hmm. can go to the edge of this piece. So in that aspect is is that you know, I'm just thankful that you find it useful in that aspect, and hopefully other people will too. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, Chase. That was oh, no, very informative. I mean, didn't know where it was going, but no. it went um, into a nice situation. If you'd like to watch more of these, uh, there is a Life Rooms channel, which you're probably on watching this. Yeah. Just in case you don't know about it, uh, it's Life Rooms on, uh, on YouTube. two words YouTube. or one word to search for. Jesus, that's a good question. It's it's it's, it's what it's, it's one word. Life mm -hmm. rooms is one word, but um, there are a lot of life rooms out there. Right. So it has the life rooms logo. Okay. You know what I mean. So hopefully more people watch the channel gets more traction. So but it has it has the uh, life rooms logo like the two L's the uh, the um, the gray and the green. If you see this and you don't know what the life rooms is, pop in, have a chat, yeah. have a coffee, see what's available. You yeah. you might meet Chase. He's yeah, a very Chase interesting might. individual. And or the stainless steel rack, you know, whatever. Thank you very much. Cool. Thank you. No, oh, nice one. Nice job.